Congressman, welcome back to the program. Uh, uh, you know, what's what's up uh, in Congress this week? Uh, not much, Tom. Um, you know, that's our problem. Uh, you know, we really can't get too many things done, given the Republicans' inability to govern. Marjorie Taylor Greene still trying to, you know, have a hammer over uh, Mike Johnson's head. Uh, I, I think we passed yet another resolution on anti-Semitism, which is getting to be a, a little bit tragic. I mean, the fact that, uh, you know, we keep doing this because Republicans have decided to weaponize anti-Semitism rather than actually address there are many members who are anti-Semitic and past and current comments. Um, but, you know, Congress is the House anyway, is severely broken under this Republican leadership. So, you know, we show up and we try to get something done. But bluntly, November is, is can't happen soon enough. Yeah, I you know, I, I totally get that. I'm I, the the article I wrote today over at HartmanReport.com is about how uh, Republicans are are planning to uh, do voter intimidation, how they're purging people from the voting rolls. Uh, you know, in the last four years, they've purged 10 percent of the entire U.S. population from voting rolls with the vast majority of that in red states, um, how they're they're uh, uh, going to be going into blue cities in red states and in swing states and challenging mail-in votes, claiming that the signatures don't match so that people will have to come in physically and prove that they are who they are. Um, you know, given that Biden only won by 80,000 votes in five swing states, um, this is really dangerous territory. Are Democrats taking this seriously? Are they doing anything about these Republican voter suppression efforts? Yeah, I think we are region, you know, state by state, and especially in Wisconsin. I know we're, we've been trying to keep on top of everything, and I think we've done a fairly good job, at least here. The problem is it shows what they think of democracy. Republicans could care less about someone's uh, what should be a right, really a respected right to vote. Instead, uh, you know, they want to pick the voters rather than the other way around. And they're going to go and very strategically try to make it harder for some people to vote. You know, we all know that people in general agree with the issues with Democrats. So the more people that turn out, the more likely it is to help Democrats. So in swing states, they're being very strategic and also, you know, very, I guess, ultimately pessimistic by by doing what they're doing. Um, but I, I, I think in a place like Wisconsin, where we have a very strong uh, Democratic Party, we have uh, some strong infrastructure, we have a governor, I think we're able to do some protections. Uh, what I worry about is the tricks they do at the end when, you know, they try to make people afraid to go out and vote. We know we'll still have those hits here for sure coming up. Yeah. Um, let me note for my listeners, uh, it is Thursday. We are live, uh, even though Congressman Pocan is usually on on Wednesdays. Uh, he will be with us for the whole hour taking your calls. The number to call is 202-808-9925. Um, Congressman, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene seems to be getting a lot of uh, pushback now uh, for the first time. Is this, does this represent a change around her craziness specifically or around Republican strategy in the House of Representatives more generally? I think they, they know what we know from all the polling. She's a huge liability. She is the face of the Republican Party uh, to most people. Most people don't know who Mike Johnson is. And she's also nuts. Um, and, you know, what's funny, I watched her leave the building the other day, uh, I think it was yesterday, and all the press flocked to her. It, it, quite honestly, it was like flies on manure. You know, um, they, they if they wouldn't give her the attention, they do because, you know, she is a clown like I had a member who videotaped it and attached circus music to it. It was just showing me that's what people think, at least uh, I think on the Democratic side of Marjorie Taylor Greene. But she still has enough of a swing with their the way their caucus operates and the rules that they created for themselves. All she needs are a few other people like Chip Roy and Matt Gates and a couple others to join her. And, you know, the full circus comes to town. So um, she's dangerous to them in that, you know, that that could be a liability in November. But she is truly the face of the modern Republican Party in this country. She is a face of the MAGA wing, which is now, you know, the body of the plane. Uh, and, you know, I think they're just kind of realizing that if they want to continue a majority, uh, she can't necessarily be that. So I think there's a little bit of pragmatism kicking in. Yeah, uh, they don't want to have another election for speaker, <laughs> bottom line. No, I've been told by Republicans that it was the most damaging thing to their caucus and, and no one wants that. You know, we've made this decision because the most recent reason she's going after him is because he allowed the vote on Ukraine. 
So I think what our leadership said is that they're going to just, you know, we'll leave it open. It's not like we're just going to go through this. But I think a lot of us may wind up voting the present because, one, I don't want to uh, say in any way she is not an utterly useless um, member of Congress because she is only an utterly useless member of Congress. But I also don't want to show any support for the most homophobic uh, election denying speaker we've had in the history. So I think mm. a present vote allows me to eat popcorn and watch their show because it is their show. The right. problem is within their own caucus. And unfortunately, that dysfunction affects the entire country and our ability to get anything done.